Between January and March of this year, GameStop chairman and Chewy founder Ryan Cohen bought a 9.8% stake in the retailer Bed Bath & Beyond. The retailer had long been struggling with declining sales and four consecutive years of net losses. Cohen sent an open letter to the board of directors where he harshly criticized the CEO and urged the company to overhaul its business strategy. Given Cohen's track record with GameStop, retail investors got excited and piled into the stock, sending the share price soaring by more than 60%. Over the next few months, Bed Bath sales continued to decline and they were running low on cash. After a disastrous earnings report, CEO Mike Triton was fired. The stock tanked by 80% and it looked like the company was headed towards bankruptcy. But in mid-August, the share price started to pump again, tripling from its recent lows. Ryan Cohen took this opportunity to dump his entire stake for a $68 million profit. The stock subsequently tanked and retail investors are left holding the bag. Some people are now calling for the SEC to investigate Cohen for market manipulation. So what happened? If Cohen had a strategic plan for the company, why did he dump his entire stake in just a few months? And now that Cohen is out of the picture, does the troubled retailer have any chance of surviving? This video was brought to you by Moomoo, a commission-free trading app that allows you to invest in US stocks, ETFs, and even Hong Kong listed stocks. Moomoo has the greatest functionality of any trading app that I've tried. For example, if we type in Bed Bath & Beyond, we can pull up a chart of short interest data over time. There are subscription-based services that can show you historical short interest data, but Moomoo is the only app that I know of that gives you this for free. And as we'll see later in this video, short interest data can be very important for explaining what happened with Bed Bath & Beyond stock. There's also a whole host of other technical and fundamental data, such as historical financials, analyst estimates, and price targets. They're currently running an exclusive promotion where viewers of this channel can get 13 free stocks when you sign up using the link in the description and deposit at least $2,000. This only lasts until September 15th, so make sure to join myself and millions of other investors in the Moomoo community. And now back to the video. Bed Bath & Beyond is one of the largest home goods retailers in North America, with 1,500 locations across the US and Canada. They sell a wide range of products like mattresses, pillows, and bathroom accessories. Historically, there were two things that made Bed Bath successful. Firstly, they had a huge selection of inventory to choose from. They would have massive shelves with various goods stacked all the way up to the ceiling. Secondly, they used coupon promotions more aggressively than perhaps any other retailer. If you live in the United States, you've almost certainly received numerous of their iconic 20% off coupons in the mail. Even though their list prices were not competitive with other big box retailers, having a generous coupon gives at least the perception that consumers are getting a good deal. For years, this business strategy worked brilliantly. Since 2009, their revenue increased every single year to a peak of $12.3 billion in 2018. They also consistently reported net profits. However, in 2019, their revenue started to decline precipitously, and their most recent fiscal year sales were down more than 36% from the peak. There were two main reasons for the decline. Firstly, other big box retailers like Walmart and Best Buy sourced their products directly from manufacturers in places like China and Vietnam. Managing relationships with thousands of small suppliers is operationally complex but gives a huge cost advantage. On the other hand, Bed Bath used third-party intermediaries to manage the foreign supply chains. This is much simpler from an administrative perspective, but the middleman takes a significant cut. Even after applying their generous coupons, products at Bed Bath were more expensive than competing retailers like Walmart. Historically, Bed Bath had such a massive selection of inventory in their stores that some shoppers were willing to pay slightly higher prices in exchange for the convenience. But with the rise of e-commerce, it became easy to compare prices on places like Amazon. When consumers saw how much more they were paying at Bed Bath, it became harder and harder to justify a purchase. Perhaps one of the reasons that Bed Bath failed to make the necessary supply chain investments is that as a publicly traded company, they prioritized their share price. Over the past decade, they spent close to $10 billion to repurchase their own shares, and they succeeded in reducing their share count by almost 70%. Assuming the value of the total business remains constant, Buying back shares will increase the share price because each share represents a greater ownership stake. But in the case of Bed Bath, their revenue and profitability deteriorated so quickly that the share price declined despite all the buybacks. Their current market cap of $855 million is about one-tenth the cumulative cost of their buybacks. In 2019, a group of three hedge funds bought a 5% stake in Bed Bath & Beyond. They argued for sweeping reforms including a replacement of the CEO. In November of 2019, they got their wish. Bed Bath fired the old CEO and brought on Mark Tritton, a former executive at Target. Tritton had a grand plan to bring Bed Bath into the 21st century. 
One of the biggest initiatives was to redesign the stores and decrease the number of items that they have for sale by up to 40%. The days of giant shelves stacked to the ceiling were now over. The new layout was far simpler. They also started cutting out the middlemen and buying products directly from the manufacturers. And finally, they launched a wide array of exclusive brands only available at Bed Bath, such as their Our Table cooking brand. These turnaround plans were disrupted significantly by the pandemic, which forced Bed Bath to temporarily close many of their stores. By 2021, the COVID lockdowns were over and consumers were flush with stimulus money. Most retailers saw massive surges in profits as consumers rushed to get out of their homes. Unfortunately, this was not the case with Bed Bath. Over the past two years, their revenue has fallen by more than 40%. In the most recent quarter, their revenue was only slightly lower than the trough during the outbreak of the COVID pandemic. Their declining revenues has led to exploding net losses. In the most recent quarter, they reported a $358 million loss. Remember that over the past decades, they've squandered many billions of dollars on share repurchases, leaving their liquidity position dangerously tight. At the current rate of cash burn, they could go bankrupt within a year, barring a new round of financing. So what went wrong? Mark Trenton's push to add new private label brands dramatically increased supply chain complexity. This meant that they were hit especially hard by the post-COVID supply chain challenges and had trouble sourcing the products that consumers wanted to buy. Also, despite their efforts to source inventory directly from manufacturers, their prices were still not competitive with other retailers and e-commerce players. On YouTube, you can find many vlogs, including this one from the Retail Archaeology channel, which show deserted bed bath stores full of overpriced goods that nobody wants to buy. Despite a brief short squeeze during the meme stock mania of early 2021, Bed Bath stock price was on a clear downward trajectory. And this brings us to Ryan Cohen. Cohen is the billionaire founder of the pet e-commerce platform Chewy. He gained a following among the retail investor community by initiating an activist stake in GameStop, eventually catalyzing its epic short squeeze. He is the chairman of GameStop and has been pushing various growth initiatives including a new NFT platform. Between January and March of 2022, Cohen bought a 9.8% stake in Bed Bath & Beyond. He sent a letter to the board of directors, calling on them to explore strategic alternatives. He complained that CEO Mark Tritton was too aggressive with his rollout of private label brands and should have focused more on fixing the supply chain issues first. He also said that they should sell their Bye Bye Baby brand, which unlike Bed Bath, has a significant e-commerce operation and may be more valuable as a standalone company. They could use the proceeds from the sale to pay down debt and invest in improving the core business. After the company reported a disastrous quarterly loss, Cohen got his wish and CEO Mark Tritton was fired. Many investors viewed this as a positive sign that Cohen was gaining more influence at the company and he may eventually become the chairman as he is with GameStop. Shortly after Cohen revealed his stake, the stock price pumped up, but over the preceding months, it continued on its downward trend as the company continued to burn cash. Around mid-August, the negative momentum sharply reversed and the share price quadrupled in the space of a few weeks. So what happened? For one, the short interest was steadily increasing over the prior months. By mid-August, it increased to more than 30% of the free flow, which is a very significant percentage. Perhaps even more interestingly, Ryan Cohen submitted a regulatory form saying that he will potentially sell his entire stake in the company. This might seem weird. Why would the stock increase when Cohen says he's potentially planning to sell? We can turn to Wall Street Bets for the answer. In this Wall Street Bets post dated August 16th, the user discusses Cohen's regulator filing. He says, quote, Okay everyone, RC has actually increased his ownership and now owns 11.8% of the float of BBBY. He filed for the right to sell his shares so that when this actually squeezes, he can take profits just like all of us, unquote. In the filing, it shows that Cohen beneficially owns 9.45 million shares, which represents an 11.8% ownership stake in the company. In the previous filing from March, it showed that he only owned a 9.8% stake, so it looked as if he bought more shares. However, if you look at the number of shares he owned, it was 9.45 million, the exact same number that he owned in August. The reason his ownership stake increased was only because Bed Bath decreased its share count in this period. He had not purchased a single additional share between March and August. To make things even more confusing, the very next day, Bed Bath & Beyond released an official statement saying that they were pleased to have reached a constructive agreement with RC Ventures in March and are committed to maximizing value for all shareholders. RC Ventures is Ryan Cohen's investment company. They gave very few details about what this constructive agreement was. Would Ryan Cohen take a more active role in the company going forward? Why would they release this statement one day after Cohen filed paperwork saying that he would potentially sell his entire stake? 
On August 18th, Cohen submitted a regulatory filing saying that he had dumped his entire stake in the company. The share price started to freefall, losing 67% of its value before stabilizing. This wiped out more than $1 billion of market value, most of which was probably held by retail investors. Ryan Cohen spent about $121 million to acquire his stake in Bed Bath at the beginning of the year. He received proceeds of $189 million from the sale for a profit of $68 million. Now the question is, did Ryan Cohen manipulate the market? Given the following that he has with the retail investor community, it's clear that his status as a significant investor in Bed Bath had a significant impact on the share price development. But just because you buy shares in the company doesn't obligate you to hold them forever. And he did file the appropriate paperwork to inform the public that he sold his stake, albeit with only one day of notice. The real question is intent. In March, he said he had long-term strategic plans for Bed Bath which could increase shareholder value. Presumably, once his plans are implemented, the share price will rise and he'll be able to sell for a profit. It's possible that he never intended to implement the strategic initiatives. He could have bought the stake because he knew the buybacks would increase his ownership percentage and catalyze a short squeeze 8 months down the line. Of course, this would require some 4-dimensional chess skills that even Cohen probably doesn't possess. A more likely scenario is that Cohen bought his stake in March, honestly thinking that he could turn the company around. But as the months went by, the company's operating performance continued to deteriorate far faster than he had anticipated. The short squeeze was perhaps the last opportunity that he could have to exit his position for a profit, so he immediately seized the opportunity. Of course, this is all speculation, and Cohen has thus far given no public comment on the situation. It's also important to note that Cohen wasn't the only one who made a killing from the Bed Bath short squeeze. A university student by the name of Jake Freeman invested $25 million that he got from his wealthy uncle into the stock at a purchase price of $5.50 per share. He was shocked when the stock squeezed to $27 and immediately sold his stake for a $110 million profit, almost double what Cohen made. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. Do you think Ryan Cohen did anything wrong by taking profits on Bed Bath & Beyond? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.